this video, I'm going to teach you how LLC taxes work. But to be honest, the only reason why I'm calling this video how LLC taxes work is because of a misconception. Most people think LLCs are a tax classification. In reality, LLCs are an entity type. You need to know how your LLC is going to be taxed in order to know what taxes your LLC has to pay. In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between legal entity types and tax classifications. Then I'm going to show you for those various tax classifications, such as sole proprietorship, S corp, partnership, and C corporation, the taxes you might owe if you elect to have your LLC taxed that way. And I'm even going to show you the tax forms. So the schedule C for the sole proprietorship, the 1120S for the S corporation, the 1065 for the partnership, and the 1120 for the C corporation. So it's a lot to cover. So make sure you stay tuned through the whole thing so you'll actually have a deep understanding of how all this stuff works. Let me quickly show you what I mean by legal entity types and tax classifications. If that's a little bit confusing, I totally understand. Look at my screen here. We've got legal entity types across the top. Focusing on LLCs here, okay? You can either form a single member LLC or a multi-member LLC. You see this P here for PLLC? That means that in some states, if you have a professional license, maybe you're an accountant or an attorney or a medical physician, um, that means you might need to or establish a professional limited liability company, okay? But don't let that confuse you. If you're a single member LLC, you can have your business by default tax as a sole proprietorship if you have a, like I said, single member LLC. That means there's just one member and that's you, an individual. By default, without checking any boxes, filling out any paperwork or anything like this, you're gonna be taxed as a sole proprietorship. A multi-member LLC, by default, that means there's maybe you and one other business partner, by default, it's taxed as a partnership, meaning you're filing form 1065. I'll show you all those details in a second. Now, you can elect to have that single member LLC or that multi-member LLC tax as a C corporation if you wanted to. A lot of people don't know that. You can file Form 8832 and have your LLC taxed as a C corporation, or you can have your single member LLC or even multi-member LLC taxed as an S corporation. So as you can see here, um, how taxes work for an LLC, that's the incorrect question. What you need to know is how do the taxes work based on the tax classification that you've chosen for your LLC, all right? Let me show you this visually a different way. I've got this um, spreadsheet that I've created for you, and what I'm showing you here is, let's say you have an LLC tax as a sole proprietorship, or an S corporation, or a partnership, or a C corporation, and you earn roughly $100,000 of profit in each one of these businesses. I'm gonna go through this here in a second, but what I'm also going to do, which I've never done in one of my videos before, is actually show you how this works with the actual tax returns. So the sole proprietor is the Schedule C, okay? The 1120S, the S corporation, is going to file this return, the 1120S. The partnership tax return, that's Form 1065, I'm going to show you this one. And the C corporation right here, Form 1120. I'm going to walk you through all this. So this is going to be a longer video, but check out the chapters below so you can skip to the section that you want to. Um, but I'd recommend watching this all the way through so you can actually understand how all of these items work. OK, let me start here, though. OK, I think if I start here, it'll help make those other uh, tax forms make more sense. So I'm going to go rather quickly. Um, once I get to these other entity types, but I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the sole proprietorship so you can just kind of gain an understanding of what I've got laid out here for you. Okay. So with the sole proprietorship, like I said, um, you can just start doing business without an LLC. You'll be taxed as a sole proprietorship, or you can form a single member LLC and be default. And the default tax treatment would be an S corp, uh, sorry, a sole proprietorship. So let's say your business revenue was $125,000. So you sold a bunch of product, maybe you offered some services, your customers paid you 125 grand, you had $25,000 in business expenses, such as maybe advertising, and you landed with a profit of 100 grand in your sole proprietorship. What taxes do you have to pay here? You have to pay self employment taxes. 
If you haven't heard that term before, it's kind of synonymous with Social Security and Medicare taxes. The tax rate, technically, it's a little bit confusing. It's 15.3%, but then you get uh, what's called an adjustment to income, which I'll show you on the tax forms. So it equates to roughly 14%, okay? So Social Security tax is here. You have to pay both the employee and employer portion because you are an employee and employer with the sole proprietor. So that's 11,451 and 2,678 for the Medicare taxes for a total of 14,129. You also have to pay federal income tax. So this is the self-employment tax. This is the income tax. You may have to pay state income tax as well if you live in a state that has state income tax. So your total taxes, Social Security and Medicare, remember that's self-employment taxes plus federal income tax, 23,357 for an effective tax rate of 23.36, 23.36%, okay? That means 100 grand, you paid this amount in tax, your effective tax rate was 23.36 when you consider the self-employment tax and income tax. I'm actually gonna skip over the S-Corp for a second and go to the partnership, and you'll see why in a second. With the partnership tax return, I'm just giving you a scenario where you actually earn double that of what you earn as a sole proprietor. This is my hope, right? This is probably your goal. You're partner partnering with someone else so you can earn more money than you could on your own, right? So in this scenario, you've earned 250 in revenue, you have 50,000 expenses and $200,000 in profit. Each of you are, let's say, 50% partners. Remember, this could be a multi-member LLC that you created and by default, it's taxed as a partnership. Or you could actually just shake hands with someone start business together, you formed a general partnership and you're supposed to file form 1065. I see that uh, handled wrong all the time as a tax professional, but I'm just letting you know that's how that works. So each one of you has $100,000 of profit that's gonna flow into your individual tax return. Again, I'm gonna show you the actual tax forms here in a moment. But rather than going through this step-by-step, step, take a look at what's happening here. John, right? I'm just saying partner one's name is John. Maybe that's your name. Maybe it's not. But you have to pay the same exact taxes that you would have to pay as a sole proprietor, right? Um, and the partner two has to do the same thing. So can you see here that in this type of partnership, it's really just two sole proprietors coming together. If they split the money 50-50, they're paying the same exact taxes. Same self-employment taxes here for partner one. Same for partner two, same income taxes, okay? You'll see that on the tax forms here in a second. The S Corp and the C Corp are a little bit different. Let's go into those here now. So with the S Corp, this could be a strategy that you implement if it makes sense for you. You earned 125 in revenue, 28,000 in expenses, 28,060 to be exact, which left you with business profit of 96,940. You have to pay yourself reasonable compensation when you are electing to have your LLC taxed as an S corporation. What that means is what was a what would a reasonable person be paid for the services that you're performing on behalf of your S corporation? In this example, I'm just saying it's $40,000. Yours might be more or less, okay? So that's the 40 grand. The remaining amount, right? 96,940 in profit minus the 40 grand you paid yourself in reasonable compensation, the 56,940, you can take this as a distribution out of your S corporation. Whether you leave it in the S corporation or take it out, you're gonna be taxed on it, meaning you're gonna to have to pay income tax on it. Let's look at the taxes now. So on this $40,000, you as the employee have to pay Social Security and Medicare taxes, and your S corporation has to pay Social Security and Medicare taxes as well, okay? The total of these items is 3,060 each for a combined total of $6,120. In case you, I lost you there, I'm saying you paid yourself 40 grand. This is 7.65% that you, John, pay Social Security and Medicare tax, and your S corporation has to do the same, 6,120. So you can see here how we're saving $8,009 when we compare that to the sole proprietorship, right? Or one of the partners in the partnership. What other taxes do we have to pay? We have to pay federal income tax of 96,000 on $96,940 of income, okay? Um, actually, it's a little bit less, it's on the taxable income. So it ends up being $11,087. Again, I will show you that on the tax form so you'll understand why that you're not paying tax on this number, you're paying tax on a lesser amount. But 
The total taxes end up being, when you combine the Social Security and Medicare, as well as the income tax, the federal income tax, it's 17207 So here our effective tax rate is 17.75%, which is much lower than the sole proprietorship or the partner in the partnership, right? So this might be the way to go depending on your facts and circumstances. Let's look at the C corporation. It's the same thing as the S corp so far, 125 in revenue, $28,060 in expenses, leaving you with $96,940 in profit. You gotta pay yourself the reasonable compensation. I covered that already with the S corp example. This $56,940, now, here, a C corporation is not a pass-through entity. It has to pay tax on the profit that it earns. So if it earns 56,940, you have to multiply this by 21% and you'll see what taxes the C corporation itself has to pay. Notice here with these other examples, if you would like to have your LLC pay, um, tax in these different ways, there's no entity level tax because they're pass-through, right? Flow-through entities is you, how you might um, hear that being said if you read uh, articles about this online, okay? 11,957 is the tax you pay on this 56,940. That's regardless if you leave that money in the C-Corp or if you take it out. You still gotta pay, the C-Corp still has to pay that tax. We already covered this. This was the Social Security and Medicare taxes, also known as FICA taxes on this $40,000 of reasonable compensation you paid yourself. So that's 6,120, okay? So, so far the 6,120 plus this is 18,077. Now, what are these taxes down here? We have to pay federal income tax. We haven't paid income tax yet, right? We paid FICA taxes, we paid a C Corp income tax, but we haven't paid individual income taxes. So on this $40,000, you're gonna pay income tax of 2,921. Seems like a steal, right? But when you add all these taxes together, you'll see where it's much more. The other thing we have to pay is if we take this $56,940 out of the business, we would do that via a dividend, not a distribution like it is over here with the S Corp, okay? We do that by taking a dividend. I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt and say that that's a long-term capital gain tax rate, meaning you've kept that money in the C Corporation for longer than a year. If you've done so, then you're gonna be subject to federal capital gains tax rates. Now these capital gains tax rates can get a little bit tricky. Uh, depending on your income, you may have to pay 0%, 15%, or 20%. Or you might pay like a blended rate, meaning some of the capital gains taxes is at zero and some is at 15%. And that's exactly what's happening here. So you only have to pay $5,770 in capital gains taxes. But if you add this tax here, the FICA taxes, the C Corp income tax, the federal income tax, as well as the capital gains tax rates, it's $26,768. So it's a effective tax rate. If you only had 96,940 in profit and you have to pay this much in total taxes, that's an effective tax rate of 27.61%, higher than all the other options on here. There is a place for C corporations. I'm sure some of you watching might say, hey, that's not fair. What about this? What about that? Yeah, there's a place for C corporations, but in my opinion, it's not for your small businesses. Okay, if you're making 500 grand or less in profit in your business, a case could be made where maybe a C corp is right, but nine times out of 10, likely not. Um, I don't wanna expand on that much more. It might confuse you. We're already covering such a large and vast amount of information here. We still wanna get into the actual tax forms okay let's gonna t let's take this one by one sole proprietorship let's look at that first like i said you can skip through using the chapters below if you're watching on youtube with the sole proprietorship you're going to complete schedule c schedule c is part of your individual tax return right you can see here form 1040 in parentheses that's telling you that this is a schedule c that's part of a form 1040. so here so have some basic information up top but we got the 125 in revenue, 25,000 in advertising expenses. Now I'm just calling this advertising, okay? In reality, you'll have a bunch of different expenses, but to keep this simple, I'm just saying, hey, all you had was $25,000 in advertising expenses. Let me take a moment to quickly introduce myself because I haven't even done that yet, right? If you're watching me for the first time, my name is Navi Miraj. I'm a CPA 
who specializes in teaching entrepreneurs how to save thousands of dollars in taxes. I do that for free right here on social media, but I also do it through a course. You can find the details of that course on my website at navimaraccpa.com, or you can click the link in the description below, depending on where you're watching this video. But in that course, essentially what it's designed to do is take you from knowing nothing about bookkeeping and how all this stuff works. And I actually convert you, transform you into a tax savvy entrepreneur who saved thousands of dollars in taxes. And it's not just one time folks, it's each and every year. So if you want to find out more details, visit my website again, navimaradcpa.com or click on the link in the description below. The reason why I bring that up right now is because if I was working with you either through the course or as a one-on-one -on -one client, we would have a lot more tax deductions here, a lot more strategies being implemented, reducing this profit number. But let's get back on topic. 125 in revenue, 25,000 in advertising expenses, leaving us with a tentative profit of $100,000, okay? Nice. Well, what do I have to do here? What kind of taxes do I have to pay? I just showed you, you have to pay self-employment taxes. That's calculated on a schedule called Schedule SE. Okay, Schedule SE is also part of your Form 1040. I don't wanna get into the weeds here. Like I told you a moment ago, essentially, if you wanna do this quick math, take the $100,000 of profit, multiply it by 14%, that's about what you're gonna owe. The exact math is 14,129 in the self-employment taxes. You get a tax break, what's called an adjustment to income on half of this that you have to pay, which is what this calculation is, $7,065. Let me show you that on the front page of your Form 1040, right? This is your Form 1040, your individual tax return. It's due April 15th. If you file an extension, it's due October 15th. Let's look at what this looks like. Uh, I wanna point out that item 1A is where your W-2 income would normally go. As a sole proprietor, uh, and even as a partnership, you do not pay yourself via a W-2. You do not put yourself on payroll. You are the sole proprietor or the partnership, okay? Um, if you hire other employees, they might get a W-2, okay? But you, as the sole proprietor, you don't do that. Your income is right here. It's on Schedule 1, line 10, and that's getting pulled from the Schedule C I just showed you. So you have $100,000 of income. You get an adjustment to income of $7,065. A moment ago, I explained to you that that is half of the self-employment taxes. So they give you a break on that, okay? So your adjusted gross income is $92,935. What do we have next? We have your itemized deduction or the standard deduction. In 2023, the standard deduction was 13,850. In 2024, it's higher. It's adjusted for inflation each year. If your itemized deductions are higher than this, then you would take uh, the higher itemized deductions. Most people these days are taking this standard deduction at 13,850. There's also the qualified business income deduction. Complex calculation, or at least it can be. In this situation, it's a little bit complex. In general, it's usually 20% of your profit in your business that you made. So 20% of 100 grand would be 20 grand. But in our situation, it's less because there's an income limitation to it. If you make too much, too little money, you don't get the full tax deduction. If you make too much money, then uh, the qualified business income deduction is phased out. It gets reduced, 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 and then zero. In this situation with this amount of income, 15,817 is our qualified business income deduction for a total amount of deductions of 29,667. Taxable income, 63,268. Are you following me so far? 100 grand minus the $7,065, which was an adjustment to income for the self-employment taxes that we paid, half of the self-employment taxes, 92,935. Then we deduct our standard deduction, our QBI deduction, and we now have taxable income of 63,268. This is how we calculate how much federal income tax we owe. We already know that we have to pay 14,129 in self-employment tax, but we have to pay 9,228 in federal income tax. You add those two together and your total tax due is 23,357. Let me show you how the 9,228 was calculated. We had taxable income of 63,268. We have to look here, we're using NerdWallet's website, Tax brackets for 2023, I'm saying you're a single taxpayer. Uh, you earned 
63, well, you didn't earn 63, you earned more than that, but your taxable income was 63,268. Well, that money flows through these tax brackets. The first 11,000, 10% tax rate. Dollars 11,001 through 44,725, 12% tax rate. And the remaining dollars, 44,726 through the uh, 63,268 is gonna pay 22%. So it's sort of a blended rate that you're paying, okay? So that's why it is $9,228. So your total tax, again, federal income tax plus self-employment tax, $23,357. Now you don't wanna pay this in April when you file your tax return. You wanna make quarterly estimated tax payments. I'm not gonna go into those details here. I have a whole nother video that perhaps my editing team will kind of show on the screen here and that'll talk you through the various penalties that you can get for not paying your taxes on time. Watch that video, you're gonna learn something, I guarantee it. Okay, now, we have a lot more to cover, right? Let's go into the S-Corp return. Um, just to kind of take a step back, zoom out a second. We just covered the sole prop, we're gonna cover the S-Corporation, okay? I'm gonna try to go a little bit quicker if I can. S-Corp return, this is a separate tax return. It's an 1120S, when I say separate, it's separate from your form 1040 okay you have your 1120s over here your form 1040 over here this is an informational return it's due march 15th not april 15th okay um, be careful with that one because you'll get some fines and penalties if you file it after march 15th you can file a six month extension and it'll be due september 15th we have one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars of revenue forty thousand dollars of reasonable compensation we paid ourselves three thousand sixty in taxes but Navi, I thought you said this is a pass-through entity. It doesn't pay taxes. Well, it doesn't pay income tax, but it is paying the employer portion of the Social Security and Medicare tax. Let me show that to you real quick. Right here, John's S Corp is paying the total of the Social Security and Medicare tax, the employer portion. That's three thousand sixty, and that's what we see here. Again, the expenses twenty-five thousand dollars. Like I said, if you uh, go to my website, navimuradcp.com, or click on the link in the description below, you can see my course where I'm going to teach you how to maximize your deductions and not just have you know one set of deductions. We'll sh actually show you the tax strategies and how to implement them in there. Um, so 25000 for a total deductions of 68060 So that leaves us with business income of 56940 there's more I could show you on this 1120S tax return, but I've actually created other videos that go through the S Corp return in detail. So uh, I'm gonna make sure that that video is linked below in the description, and I'll take you through the Schedule M2 and the balance sheet and all that stuff there. You can learn more detail there. I'm just covering the front page here so that this video doesn't get too long, okay? Now, this is the front page of the tax return. Uh, you have the $56,940 in profit, which you can take as a distribution. As I said earlier, whether you take that $56,940 as a distribution or not, you're still gonna pay income tax on it. How does that work? Well, let me show you. Here's the front page of our Form 1040 again. By front page, I just mean the first page, okay guys? What do we have here? Now we have W-2 income because we are supposed to pay payroll taxes and uh, pay those FICA taxes throughout the year and receive a W-2. So we have that $40,000 in reasonable compensation. It's picked up here on the personal return, all right? That's what that is. Then we have the 56,940. That was the amount we took as a distribution, but whether we took it as a distribution or not, it was gonna land here and we have to pay income tax on it. Total income, $96,940. Standard deduction, 13,850. Qualified business income deduction, easier to calculate here. It's 20% of the 56,940 is where we get the qualified business income deduction of 11,388. Total deductions, 25,238, bringing us taxable income of 71,702. Okay, make sure you see that there, 71,702. How much tax do we pay on 71,702? I showed you that in the sole proprietorship example it's 11087 Why is it 11087 Because that $70,000 plus flows through these tax brackets, and you pay 10% on this amount, 12% on this amount, and whatever is remaining, we're going to be at 22%. If you had more money, right? If your S corporation was extremely profitable, you could be over here in the 35% or 37% tax bracket.
Okay, that was the S corporation and how S corp taxes work. I hope you followed that. Um, we filed the 1120S by March 15th, or we filed an extension and filed the return by September 15th. We have our individual return that all of that income from the S corp flowed into, right? This is the 40,000 of reasonable comp. This is the amount that we took as a distribution. We had some deductions here and um, our taxable income was 71,702. And so we paid income tax of 11,087. Remember too, we paid uh, social security and Medicare taxes out of that forty thousand um, dollars as we were earning that paycheck sort of throughout the year okay so we had the three thousand sixty on the s corp return another three thousand sixty was withheld from our paycheck from that forty grand was withheld and paid to the irs and then we actually have to pay them the income tax as well so total taxes seventeen thousand two oh seven let's look at the partnership tax return Form 1065, this is also an informational return. It's also due March 15th. Um, as you can see here, I up the numbers, right? You're in partnership with someone, hopefully you're making more money. I hope it's more than double, but in this case, I doubled it up, $250,000 in receipts. In other words, that was your revenue or your sales. $50,000 in expenses this time. It's still advertising expense, but it's here on a different, um, statement the 1120s had advertising expense right here on the front page of the 1120s on the 1065 there's no advertising item or line item called out so it's on a separate schedule over here called advertising 50 grand just wanted to show you that real quick again if i'm working with you through our course and in our community there where you can ask questions after every section um, you will learn way more than this and you'll learn more tax strategies such as hiring your children right you can hire your minor children get a tax deduction for it your children can pick up that income on their tax return but because they're making less than their standard deduction they don't pay income tax but since your children have earned income they can now establish a roth ira for themselves and can you imagine how much a roth ira can grow to if you start them at maybe age seven when they're doing very minor things in your business and keep funding that as they get older into their teenage years, it's gonna be well over a million dollars if you keep funding that. Okay, anyway, we have $200,000 of income, right? 250 here of revenue, 50,000 of expenses, ordinary business income, $200,000. Another way of saying that is that's your profit, okay? This profit is getting split between partner one and partner two. These are a bunch of yes and no questions that I don't wanna waste your time with. But uh, partner one and partner two distributed the $200,000 to them, okay? Here's where you can see distributions, 19A. I'm going quickly here, but again, I created a video series where I go through the partnership return in depth. I just wanted to show you this really quick. We have a balance sheet here on the partner. We have the partner's capital accounts, okay? At the end of the year, uh, they started the year with $10,000 in capital. They earned $200,000. They pulled out the $200,000 in distributions. So they ended the year with $10,000 in capital. Each partner would get a form K1 from their partnership showing them, hey, I made $100,000 in business income. And guess what? Of that $100,000, all of it was subject to self-employment earnings. Okay. So how does this work on their individual return? So partner one is over here. Again, no W-2. If you are a partner in a partnership and you're receiving a W-2 from that partnership, there's likely a problem. You could get paid a guaranteed payment or you could get paid the K-1, but you should not be getting a W-2 if you're a partner in a partnership. All right, so what do we have? We have $100,000 of income, 7,065 as an adjustment to income. That's half of the self-employment tax. Same thing like the sole proprietorship. So we have adjusted gross income of 92,935. Standard deduction, 13,850. Qualified business income deduction, 15,817. I went into the detail there when I went over the sole proprietorship, so I'm not doing it here. Again, uh, this video is part of a video series, so you can see those finer details in the how do partnership taxes work video. But here, I'm just kind of covering it quickly. 29,667 is the total of our standard deduction and qualified business income deduction. So our taxable income is 63,268. If I take the 63,268 and flow it through our tax brackets again, we're gonna get 
a blended rate, right? Some at 10, some at 12, some at 22%, and land in a situation where we have to pay $9,228 in federal income tax. We also pay that $14,129 in self-employment taxes, right? That's the Social Security and Medicare for a total tax of $23,357. Again, I want to remind you, maybe watch that video about how to make quarterly estimated tax payments. If you wait until the end of the year to make this payment of $23,357, a couple things are going to happen. One is you're going to spend the money. It's not going to be in your business account. And so you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble where you might need to do some kind of financing arrangement with the IRS to pay the money. At a minimum, let's say you had the money in the business account to pay it, you're going to get uh, hit with the penalty because you're supposed to make those payments quarterly and not all at one time when you file your tax return. Again, I explain it in the other video that uh, we'll link up in the description below. Okay, now let's take a step back. We got one more return to go through. It's the C-Corp return. Okay, let's go through that. It's a bit unique compared to the others. Here's the C-Corp return, Form 1120, due April 15th, not March 15th, like the 1120S and the 1065. It's due April 15th. You can file a six-month extension, and it'll be due October 15th. So we have $125,000 in revenue, $40,000 in compensation to officers, right? That's the reasonable compensation. Very similar to the S Corp example, 3,060 in taxes and licenses. This is the FICA taxes on the employer portion, 40,000 times 7.65%. That's 6.2% for Social Security on the employer side and 1.45% uh, on the Medicare taxes on the employer side for a total of 3,060. $25,000 in advertising expenses for a total of $68,060 in expenses leaving us a profit of $56,940 in the C corporation. Now, whether we pull that money out or not of the C corporation, a C corporation is not a pass-through entity. Therefore, we have to pay taxes at the C corp level. This is unique to the C corp. Amount owed, line 35, 11,957. What is the math on that? 56,940 times 21% is 11,957. Let me show you on the spreadsheet. 56,940 times 21% is 11,957. Not a pass-through entity. The C Corp itself is paying the tax. Not John. The C Corporation is paying that tax, okay? Now, uh, what else do we have? Just some other schedules with the C Corporation. Not gonna go into detail here. Basically, there's a uh, balance sheet that you'll see below. There's cash in the bank. Uh, there's equity, um, and this is just showing you that there's no retained earnings. Uh, 56940 was earned, but it was distributed in the form of a dividend, and so there's no retained earnings left at the end of the year. This information goes into the individual tax return of that C corporation owner. Okay, The C corporation owner on their individual tax return has a W-2, they get paid $40,000, right? That's the reasonable compensation. It's showing up here on the individual tax return. Then they paid themselves that they took that distribution. That distribution is called a dividend. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt here. And let's say it was a long-term capital gains tax treatment, which means they've um, held that money for greater than a year. And so it's a qualified dividend, not an ordinary dividend. 96,940 is the total of these, right? Reasonable comp and the dividend payment. We have the standard deduction, 13,850. No qualified business income deduction here, right? C Corps don't get that. That is a uh, sole proprietor, S corporation, and partnership thing. That is not a C corporation thing. C corporations got a reduced tax rate under the Trump uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, bringing C Corp rates down to 21% from, I think, 39, I forget the number. Anyway, uh, so no QBI deduction. So $83,090 uh, $83, in taxable income, but it's a bit unique. It's not, not, it's not all taxed at ordinary income tax rates. We've got some at regular ordinary income tax rates and some at those capital gains, long-term capital gains tax rates. Let me show you that on the spreadsheet. It's a little bit easier to understand. 2,921 was federal income tax. That's on the $40,000 of ordinary income, right? 
and then 5,770 in capital gains tax rates. Again, that's long-term capital gains. It can be taxed at 0%, 15, or 20. Here's NerdWallet's website again. Single, 0% on this amount, 15% on this amount, 20% on this amount here. Okay, that's for 2023, 2024. These brackets are a little bit wider, so it's a little bit more um, favorable to you. Okay, uh, calculating that on your own is a little bit complicated. In your tax software, we've got a worksheet that kind of explains that, and even here it's a little bit convoluted, right? We're saying that some of their income tax is taxed at ordinary income tax rates, and then some of it is taxed at 0%, 18,475. Some of the capital gains tax rates uh, the 38,465 is taxed at 15%. That's why it's 5770. You can grab a screenshot right here, zoom in on it and dissect this. It'll make more sense. Don't want to spend too much time on it here. I just want to show you how the C Corp taxes work. Okay. So going back to our initial slide, how is an LLC tax? How do LLC taxes work? That's not the right question. The right question is how is the tax classification that you chose to have your LLC taxed at, how do the taxes work? I just walked you through the example of how they work under a sole proprietorship, S corporation, partnership, and a C corporation. I showed that to you on an Excel spreadsheet so you could see it all at once. And then I took it a step further and showed you on the actual tax forms themselves so that you could learn how those work. I went rather quickly in this video, as I've said, I've slowed the pace down a little bit and created individual tax videos that show you how the sole proprietorship works, the S corporation works, the partnership works, and the C corporation works. So if I went a little bit too quickly for you in this video, go ahead and find those other videos. They're all over social media and watch those. It'll help you with your understanding. With that said, I hope to see you in the course uh, so that you can learn other tax strategies other tax classifications that might be better than the one you're in now. Okay, you can implement those strategies on your own because you have someone like myself teaching you, holding your hand, literally showing you what buttons to click. This is how payroll works. This is how you start payroll. This is the buttons you click to pay yourself, okay? It's very detailed. There's over 11 hours of video content. Many, many students are in there, are giving me great feedback. They're so happy with uh, their purchase as well as um, the way I teach, right? It's a, I, I didn't know this about myself before I started creating content on YouTube. People love the way that I teach. I take complex matters and break them down into easy to understand steps that everyone can understand. Anyway, with all that said, appreciate you watching. I'll either see you in the next video within this series or in the course.